So you might want to hang out with this one. Uh, it's going to be a lengthy video. I'm going to be looking at a Shack bottle and I'm going to be comparing it to uh, the one that came out 10 years ago and see how these stack and what changed in the last 10 years between the quality and the execution of this model coming from Reebok. Hey guys, welcome back to the Kicks Reasons channel and today we are looking at the 2023 release of the Reebok Pump Shack Attack Black and Azure, which a lot of people uh, were expecting, a lot of people were excited about because we only saw one release of these and that was back in 2013. So it's been exactly 10 years since this shoe released and honestly, I'm very disappointed. Uh, I was really debating, should I make this video? Should I make the comparison? Uh, but a lot of you have been asking me, can you look at these? Can you check them out? Can you look at, uh, can you make a, a little comparison between these and the 2013? Uh, I'm one of those people that I actually like this model a lot. And in, back in 2013, I bought six or maybe seven pairs. Uh, I have one in a constant rotation. I have multiples uh, staying on ice, what they call these days <laughs> in my collection. But uh, the Shack Attack model is in the top three of all sneaker models of all time for me. If you guys have been with my channel, you know that I have probably over 40 pairs of Shack Attack, different colorways, some of them very rare, and some of them not so much. But this is a very beloved uh, colorway, despite the fact that Shaq never wore them on the court. Uh, he only featured them in commercials, uh, commercials for other companies as well, and kind of like off-court uh, wearing. I'm not sure why they did not like this specific color. Uh, he all, always wore the white one and uh, swapped the laces with black ones whenever he wanted. Uh, but long story short, same designer, Judy Close, of course, genius. And if we look at these 2023, I'm going to bring you close on the close-ups. I'm going to show you some details. We have a significant decline in quality compared to the 2013s. And uh, uh, of course, I'm going to show them kind of uh, in a separate close-ups. Uh, the 2013 pair was done entirely, almost entirely in a genuine a leather upper. The only synthetic parts were the uh, synthetic new book overlay that says Reebok, uh, the element or the squatting poodle, what they call it, and the vectors. And of course, the Azure portion on uh, the back of the heel and the pump. The rest of the shoe entirely done in a nice thick genuine leather this is one of the reasons i bought six pairs back in the day because i saw the first one came out i bought it i saw the leather i was like yes i need this shoe in multiples because genuine leather doesn't age the only problem with uh, shack attack in in time is the speed lacing system uh, because it's made of plastic it kind of deteriorates and uh, starts to crack but because the holes go through the leather as well it's still wearable. It's not something that is gonna, you know, crumble completely. Also the midsole, the composite there, uh, it's not a 100% polyurethane or old school polyurethane, so it's not gonna crumble uh, very easily. Now, obviously they changed that even more with the new releases. And I mentioned that many times before, uh, that new uh, polylite compound they're having here is much softer than 2013, much softer than the original one. So that's one good thing that goes for that 2023 uh, pair. The rest of it, not so much. So we have some portions of uh, genuine leather made. The toe box, I'm still not 100% convinced is a genuine leather because it's so uh, well coated and almost reminds me of synthetic leather. Uh, but if I squeeze it in some areas, it creases like an, a genuine leather. So uh, maybe it's just a thinner cut and they use a lot of uh, PU on top to kind of reinforce it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. The, the toe box is the only part in these side panels where the vector is. Uh, the back portion of the shoe, completely synthetic. You can see it. Uh, the Where the lace loops are on top side, synthetic. Uh, obviously, the Azure part is synthetic, uh, but it's a, a little bit different, kind of a thicker one compared to the 2013. Uh, the texture on the overlay uh, where the Reebok is, is more true to the original one because this is how the original one was more more textured and of course the shape of 2023 is better if you look at the toe box is uh, nicely slanted it's not reinforced uh, where the 2013 is a little bit more bulky uh, reinforced uh, and so on so uh, this goes well for the 2023 is the shape of it very very true to the original uh, now <laughs> obviously if we look into really into the details uh, you will know this pretty much all around across the shoe, uh, just the quality is not the same. It's not the same 
uh, on the tongue. It's not the same on the panels. The stitching is a little bit off. Uh, we're talking about different inner liner. Uh, and obviously this is a different factories. We have the 2013 was made in China, much better quality. Same goes for the question, same goes for many other models that were made in China. Uh, once Reebok moved their production to Vietnam, uh, the quality definitely declined. Now, if we look at the stitching in the back of both shoes, where the Shaq logo is, they're almost ident identical. Uh, obviously the one from 2013 is a little bit lighter. The color is a little bit lighter. Now I don't have the original pair to compare the colors, but I think that's a minor detail. It's not something we should really gripe about. We have the same shack tag on the back of the pump and the pump on 2013 works much, much better than the one in the 2023. Uh, the one in the 2023 works like any other shack that has been released in the last couple of years. Any other shack that's been made in Vietnam and released. Uh, yes, you pump, but you need excessive force to put the air inside and there's not much uh, coming in and out. Uh, now, if we look at a 2013, much easier pumping action when you do it and, uh, and the bladder inflates faster. You can hear the air coming out uh, nice and quicker. And another change, the insole is not the athletics insole. Uh, we are looking at Ortolite here, which I don't know, some people prefer. Maybe it's a step up, uh, maybe it's degrading. For me, um, I prefer the Athletics. Why? Because they have arch support, because you can pull them out easily. They're not glued in. You can clean them up, refresh them, do all that stuff. But on the flip side, the Ortolite takes care of a lot of the, the odor, the moisture and all that stuff. The writing on top of the uh, insoles are the same, just like on the original one, except they are kind of flipped around. Uh, the 2023, the riding starts, if you're holding the shoe with the toe box up, the riding starts that way, where on the 2013 is the other way around and the font is thicker. Uh, obviously the famous quote right here from Rudyard Kipling, all oh, men count on you, but not too much. And the Shaq logo and Reebok on top of it. The production date here is of uh, October 2022. So almost a year since these were produced, they released in early 2023. Again, I only have one pair. Probably I'm gonna buy another one just because how much I like this model. Again, you guys are gonna hear me not being happy with it. At the same time, I'm saying I'm gonna buy another one. Uh, but uh, you gotta understand how essential this uh, shoe is for me uh, in my history and my love for the brand. Uh, the tone is held by bungees and interesting enough, the tone inner liner is black but the bungee is blue or azure, similar uh, to the older one. And the same thing is with uh, the uh, 2013. Both shoes have the graphite plates. I'm glad that Reebok are still preserving this and not going to plastics and claiming that this is the new graphite <laughs> where uh, graphite needs to be carbon fiber. Uh, the riding Reebok on the side, almost the same size. I still think uh, the one from the 2013 is a little bit thicker. A little bit more kind of substantial but if we go back to the 2023 i mean they just look and feel cheaper in hand uh, even if you hold one of the 2013s and one of the 2023s you can see the the obvious reasons uh how that's it's done again i'm not sure why why this leather looks so cheapy uh, i know the toe box it's not synthetic uh, but it, it looks just, it looks very cheap. I think it's just the coating they, they, they used. Regardless, if you find these on a good price, I still believe they're a good buy. Uh, just get, get yourself a pair for your collection. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people were waiting for this one to drop. A lot of people like this model a lot, just like myself. And this is uh, one of the best models from Reebok ever. Interesting, the vector on the new 2023 is made of synthetic leather, kind of a sparkly one, where on the 2013 is made of this uh, kind of a synthetic suede. Uh, very nice and soft, I really like it. Um, overall, uh, I mean, having multiple pairs from 2013 and still wearing them, I think they feel better on feet. I think the padding is even more substantial, uh, slightly smaller padding on the 2023. Uh, stepping comfort on the 23 is better, not gonna lie, because this uh, softer midsole contributes a ton uh, to the comfort. Uh, a little bit more support on the 2013, a little bit more denser uh, midsole. 
but on the flip side if you wear them a lot they're still gonna get softer and softer so yeah what else i can say i mean <laughs> you see the difference 10 years price hike uh, these in 2013 were 160 dollars which was quite a lot of money at the time i have to be honest and now uh the 2023 uh, pair i think retails at 180 so you're looking at uh lower quality with a 20 dollar bump realistically is not that much back in at uh, the same time jordan models were costing the same 160 now we're seeing consistently they're hitting 200 uh, plus dollars uh, granted the popularity is different there and people are still buying a lot of them and i know they're going to continue to buy them uh, with reebok the situation is a little bit different but realistically i would love to see reebok going to the quality and just uh, giving us a, a very high quality uh, product for that price. I keep reaching out to designers and project managers and people telling me, oh, it would have cost a lot more, would have cost a lot more. Well, I see plenty of companies releasing sneakers that are around $100, entirely made of genuine leather. Uh, Via, uh, New Balance, Yes, they don't have the pump, they don't have the graph lights, but really, I really want to see a breakdown of pricing, how much is going to be. To me, all comes to corporate greed, and I'm not blaming Reebok. You guys know me, I have a tremendous love for the brand. Uh, no matter what, I'm still going to be buying them. Uh, but I just feel like all these companies, Nike included, they're probably the biggest offender, uh, keep justifying their price increases with uh, inflation and prices and all that stuff when in reality when you look at inflation it's uh three to five percent um where the price hike is 12 13 15 20 percent over uh, the price that we had 10 years ago so obviously we're looking at a tiny mixture of inflation plus a lot of percentage for corporate greed but that's how economy works these days guys anyway uh <laughs> drop out next time for more economy lessons in the channel uh, but we're looking at the, uh, the Shaq attack. I love this model. I will continue to love it no matter what. Uh, it's slightly disappointing with the quality, but the comfort in the shape is perfect. It's more close to the original one. Uh, I'm still gonna wear these and I'm still gonna wear my 2013. I uh, love this pair. I, I just love the way the, the leather feels. It's super soft and nice. And overall, I think uh, when the production was in China, we were getting a better product, but we know how that goes and uh, nothing we can do about it. I'm still extremely happy that we're even getting pairs like this. Uh, honestly, uh, 10, 12 years ago, uh, maybe a little bit more, I never thought I'm gonna see models like that coming back. Uh, I thought, you know, my childhood dreams from 30 years ago will forever remain a dreams but here we are uh, we have nice people at Reebok they love the brand and love the classics and they're consistently trying to bring these beautiful shoes back to life and I'm so happy about that because I me as a older sneaker dude I can finally uh, get some of those that I was never able to get back in the day so yeah that's pretty much it guys hit the thumbs up if you like the video stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new Check out some of the other videos coming very, very soon. I have other Shaq models to show you very soon and others as well. And as always, guys, you have a wonderful day.